Well, thanks everybody for joining another recruiter therapy. We got a ton of topics that we want to go over. Uh, first, I put in a PDF in the chat. We have a ton of stuff going on here at Higher Easy webinars, virtual conference coming up, a uh, ton of stuff that you guys can get involved with. So feel free to look at that PDF and share with your recruiting community. Uh, other than that, let's take it away. Any the free, the free resources thing you posted today was really cool, by the way. Yeah. Um, and then if I, uh, if Jason Seiden happens to see this episode, um, his labeled jar comment last two weeks ago <clears throat> has literally not left my brain about <laughs> how you can't see the label when you're inside the jar. No mm -hmm. joke, though. Like that could have been the most. I get easy, simple, most impactful thing I think I've heard in the last three months for me as a human. Speaking of which, does does everybody anybody here have a have a a phrase that they tend to use over and over again to describe either work? Yeah, or I've been I've said it here almost every episode. It's be kind to your shadow. I like that one. Mine is uh, perfectionism is very slow death. That's mine. Uh, is Maddie, don't do that. We've been, we've had, had had phrases like that one. Mm -hmm. Nick, I'm sure that's yours as well. I yeah, I don't I don't really have one. I don't think. I said this in the Uber yesterday. Um, asked him if he had any ibuprofen, and he's like, he's like, oh, what do you have a headache from? I was like, banging my head against the wall all day. <laughs> and he had some. <laughs> I remember one that I used to use was uh, from a swimmer, Georgia area swimmer, a guy named Steve Lundquist, who uh, his his infamous phrase was first is first and second is last. And 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 that's something that that we that that you know we tend to have jammed into us at a, at an early age, and 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 it, and it's often too late for people to realize. Wait a second, that's 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 not true. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, you're gonna get me thinking on that one now. Well, uh, am I? First is first, and second is last. Is not a. It's, it it yeah. is something that yeah. you know, athletes have have preyed upon. You know, we we all grew up during. You know, some of us who grew up when, for example, blue ribbons and trophies actually used to mean something. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. not everyone gets one. Not yeah. everyone gets one, and you can get one. And participation is just, um, it's a weakness. Mm -hmm. that they, they are simply a weakness um you know not none of us all of us have fin finished last on something and then yes i have every, <laughs> you know, absolutely I, yeah I, you know if athletically we anyone that we all know we have finished last uh, but you yeah. know at, at, at you know your your response to that is okay, okay. or hey. what you can just, we can we bring mike on camera today rest nation Mike, do you want to come on camera? I think he needs to be a part of the conversation because I want him to explain the support community there. He's down. Hmm. He created. Sorry, okay. Steve, didn't mean to cut you off. No, I that's fine. We'll, be, we'll get back to this. Okay. Yeah. No, we don't have to. We can keep going. He can join in. No, know. no, no. You know, but you know, and, and, and so, and then there are others, you know, when we, whatever we finish, we like to, you know, some of, some of us, not everybody go, that's not acceptable. I, I know what I can do better. Mm -hmm. And there's no such thing as giving your 100%. Because once way, you've given that 100%, you go, well, I guess that wasn't 100%. I guess there's more on top of it. I have to find out what that is. I, uh, mm -hmm. As I get ready to do these recruiter events in, in <clears throat> um, April and June, and info will finally come out next week. Hey, Mike. Um, I got some really interesting advice from someone who used to attend the events when I did them back from 27 to, 2007 to 2012. And it was this. They said, Paul, will you enjoy them this time, please? Yes. And it was, yes. I would worry so much about attendees and speakers to be have enough coffee where people properly caffeinated, they know where the restrooms were, that I I had I was neutral. Um and I would already 10 minutes after it was over be thinking about the next one. And I never stopped in the moment. The very first one we did in Minneapolis, um, John Sumser came to town to speak at it when he was doing his recruiting roadshow. Yeah. And he put his arm around me and I didn't really know him that well. Um, and he put his arm around me and he goes, how did you think today went? And I told him, and he goes, that's cute. 
He <laughs> goes, if you pulled that rod out of your ass, maybe we would have had more fun today. Oh, that's good advice. John, tell us like it is. And that, I remember my first Minnesota recruiters event I spoke at. It, there must have been like 300 people there. I was blown away. Like I, it was like a luncheon, Paul, I believe. It, and it was like, I couldn't, could not believe how many people were there. I was like, like, it was probably 2012-ish. It was, it was a little like, bit after. It was, it was post the handoff to Jason Buss. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Um, and but, but it is this thing, though, that I don't celebrate wins and victories. Um, I already am moving on. I'm already, I don't, and I am a stop and smell the roses kind of person. I am a stop and chill, <clears throat> be self-aware. But I get so caught up in making sure that everybody else is good mm -hmm. that I can give off a bit of a an uptight vibe. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was really interesting that someone had the, and that we're close enough friends where they would say it to me. Like, hey, will you enjoy it this time, please? Well, we would do that at SourceCon. Let, let's, you know, we had a group of us who, you know, there was the, you know, we we know about the early morning crowd. Um and you know there 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 were a couple of times and you know this Shannon so this is nothing new and in, in which you were actually calm and you didn't worry about other things. Yeah, when I, yeah, when I just woke up. When you just woke <laughs> up and, I, and 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 I bring your tea about you know five in the morning, and 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 you're having your hair and makeup done because that was very for you that was cathartic because of the company. Mm -hmm. um, and then you were everything was good right before, and then. The game face, the behind the blocks face, kicks on, and it it sometimes it you know during during the whole thing because we, we would all give suggestions. Hey, this is happening. Take care of it. But we'd find you during the course of the event, and find a way to help you. Just we tell you fun stories, we tell you jokes. This has happened, and you could see that you just I'm enjoying the moment. Mm -hmm. But you need that reminder. Mm -hmm. Yes, you do. And, yeah. and, you know, that's really the essence of, you know, you know, Mike's on, you know, for one of these reasons, you need a reminder that it's not just you alone. There is this whole community of people who will do silly things like <laughs> call some ding dong up out of the blue, who I only know through, through some guy, you know, that, you know, from 20 years ago. And all of a sudden, you know, she's a panelist everywhere. Mm -hmm. you know, she's like a video star she's like the next ah. doc influencer right here you know matt mom the influencer i wouldn't say i'm an influencer you are you don't re see see it's things like this as, as a result of reaching out to other people you don't realize that, yeah. that that you know nicole's story went global and it wasn't by choice it was by you know honesty and the message resonated you know, and so any everybody has that capacity to influence others. But you have to, you know, ask for help. If you don't know how to do it, you have to ask for help. Yeah, I think um I'm I'm one thing I've really noticed recently is how much you know, Shannon, your posting today <laughs> for for recruiters by recruiters, the newsletter today, holy cow. I read that before I came in and that's what got me here. And I was so impressed with what you were talking about. The, the essence of like the in club and the out club and, mm -hmm. and how we are feeling that to some degree, like unemployed recruiters are feeling that to, to some essence, the humanity of what we do is so important. I mean, we are trying to do things to help each other. Um, and, and that's why we, you know, that's why I quite frankly worked with Jim Shroud to create the the job seeker support group for the talent acquisition pros. Like it overnight it's got forty people in it. That's 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 how much of that need is there. And it just I think what I'm noticing is just how important the community is. Um we're at that point now where we need to get back to the roots of who we are yep. of of recruiters. We need to remember the humanity behind our profession, and and unfortunately, that's it's becoming all the automation, all these different things that the humanity is going out the window. We got to get back to it. Exactly. Can you tell us a little bit more about the group you created and how we can access it? Sure, can. And um, it's a there's a couple of groups. So the, there's a Facebook group. Ronnie Bratcher is an admin because he's in between jobs right now. Good man. 
and Great. he's helping me out. So I'm, there's also some others that will probably get involved. And it's going to be a I, – we're I, I pulled the group to see how often they want to meet. Right now it's leaning towards a weekly. <laughs> so we'll see because, you know, the, the support and the opportunity for peer-to-peer -peer support is there. Where I think they just need they need a place to go and just tell them that they're okay. They're not bad people. They're, you know, getting rejection. It hurts, right? It hurts. Now, I think um, it's the TA Professionals Career Seeker Support Group is what it's called. The same name on both Facebook and LinkedIn. And I'll get the links in the chat um, before we end for today so everybody can go there if they want. Um, but get in touch with me on LinkedIn if you want to be involved because we'd love to have you. So um, I'm, I'm learning more volunteers makes lighter work because <laughs> it's a, it's going to be a, it looks like it might be a bigger need than I realized. So I just I know that the peer to peer support is important. Mm -hmm. Mike, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I'm going to. Can you talk to us and for everyone who's going to hear this? How are you? How how do you manage you during? this time that you're going through like can you talk a little bit about the experience you don't have to give us like the whole thing sure. if you want to but you um you seem to me when we had our time here in minneapolis that you and i both tend to wear our emotions on our sleeve right and i think that we're both self-aware and at times though we get a little consumed can you talk about how do you manage you wonderful wonderful question and um I'm, I'm going to start by saying this. The first step is, you know, one thing I learned during COVID was to have a backup stream of income. That's the first step I'm going to talk about. Being able to bring in extra income and monetize something that you're doing. So it's that entrepreneurial spirit. Um, I'm building my own vlogcast, and um, it's called Where's Your Next? It's getting traction. It's growing. But what's fun about that is that there's a need for people to connect on issues like these. And so how I'm managing is going to my friends in the community. Um, I must say, I have to give Steve Levy props because he's been like my, my go-to man and he is so flippin' patient with me. <laughs> so like every time I call, he takes the time and listens and, and lets me bounce ideas. Another one's been Jim Shroud, honestly. Uh, Jim has been so good to me. Just when when I came to him with the idea, he was like, "Let's get a webinar up," and immediately SourceCon was there. You know, he's he's leading the charge. Great guy, right? And he's going to be on the vlogcast in about a week and a half. We've got Susanna Fraser coming on on Friday. So the community is the big key, right? The mm -hmm. that's the first step is have ourselves be connected with each other and have a support system. And so I think that's the big one. Secondly, when I learned to have that income stream, um, I'd already been doing gig work. I'd been doing delivery. Um, so I'd been doing DoorDash. I'd been doing Uber Eats. i have been doing Rody. I learned about all this during the pandemic, and I got really good at it. I learned how to multi-app, um, as the saying goes in the gig economy. But that's my side gig, but it became my primary gig. And somehow, I'm even working at Domino's, folks. <laughs> and I make $25 an hour doing Domino's delivery. So you know what? It's okay. Good money. Do not be afraid to take on other work outside of recruiting. And by the way, there's other sources. I talked to a gentleman this morning, Gannon, over at High, Higher Scale. Dude, that guy is doing something awesome. He's created an ecosystem for people to go on and recruiters that have their own LLC, he's got tips and tricks and all this this ecosystem for people to find work and he's working with companies and um, it's a really good partner. He's my, uh, he's going to be my, uh, my sponsor for our vlogcast. So awesome. just having that conversation today made me realize just the extension of our community across the board is powerful. You are recruiters and, and just getting each other and helping each other lift and, and keep growing is powerful, right? That's what it's all about. I want to I want to ask Steve then a question too because Steve, um, you are you are um, counseling for lack of a better word, a lot of people. Many of them are your friends. All of them are my friends. Okay, but you get what I mean, right? Like there's there's 
stronger emotional attachments with some than others. How are you handling you while you're doing your stuff and then being empathetic to others? Like how, cause that can be a lot to carry. How do you do that? And I'm actually asking this selfishly because I'm helping a lot of my, my tech <clears throat> friends in Minneapolis who are going through things. And at times I feel like I'm drowning. So I'm asking you, how do you do it? So maybe I can learn a little bit better how I can handle me while I'm trying to help others. I don't think I do anything, honestly, anything special for me. It's I, I, my satisfaction, personal satisfaction is knowing that nothing can be solved in, in one call, in one message, mm -hmm. one text. It's, it's a long, life is a long game. I turned 65 in three weeks. I had no, oh, I know, shut up. I'm going to kill you. I had no thoughts of ever being this old. I remember when I was 20 thing, boy, in the year 2000, I'm going to be 40. I'm going to have three kids, a career and this and that, that shot to hell. Um, and, but, 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 but the, the, and, and, and it probably helps having, you know, people like Jerry Crispin as one of my mentors and, and very close by as Shannon will find out very soon um I to, love him. you know and, and I, I I'll find out soon i've already done the steve jerry tour i know no no but we'll do, you're doing it again in in soon yeah and, i'm actually staying in, in jerry's rv i and i that that i and and in in the back in his daughter's driveway yes i know that oh wait i thought i was staying at his house he moved no, no, into no. his house the R, well, maybe he'll drip he'll drag it there for this one but it's 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 at his daughter's house which is a maybe maybe 300 yards away I, well, I, I know. I, I've seen it there, too. I I've, uh, I have this vision of me, Steve, and Jerry sitting outside with his solo stove, like, you know, late at night. We'll do that. Like, until, like, late at night for us, by the way, is like 8 o'clock, 8.30, um, <laughs> drinking wine and just, like, you know. Doing this. Coming up with world's problems, <laughs> solving world's problems. Oh. Like you can sell tickets but, to but, 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 but to But to go back to answer your question, Paul, it's I, 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 it may be right around the time I turned 60. Um, and, and it actually coincided with the article I wrote, Shannon, about, you know, the 60 sourcing lessons I learned at 60. It just came out. And then I kind of realized that um, the, the, I, I was entering this, for lack of a better word, I don't give a shit phase of my life. And it's not that I don't care. Everyone knows. If you know me, you know I care. I wear my heart on my sleeve. You're worrying less about some of the things. You know. I don't, you know, I, I, the, the, the life, life became uh, a convergence towards two things. And most of you have heard me say this. I'll say it for, for the audience. Um, I'm at the phase of my life where I care about two things and two things only. No special order. Simplicity and honesty. And, uh, you know, the com complex stuff is... Why worry? We'll just fix the problem. I got that from a kindergarten teacher I, I knew once. I, I still know. And she used to say to her kids when they were, I can't even I'm feed on myself. I'm so and so is bothering me. Well, you'll just have to fix the problem. So that's it. It's 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 keeping everything in, in a perspective that I don't allow it to overwhelm me. And if I do feel like something is overwhelming me, just like you go up to the lakes. I go down to the beach mm -hmm. and I'm instantly, I mean, this is my place. Yeah. Or I'll go for a hike. This is my place. Or I'll go for a hike. I'll just look at people and, and, and realize we all have the same problems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's not really, that's, it's almost a non-answer. No, it but is. It, it, part of it is you're going to have to come to grips with, 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 with who you are and what you can do and what you can't do. And 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 that's really it, you know. Yeah. I'm I'm you know uh, 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 someone we know uh, had me look at their upcoming, you know, go run through their their thoughts on their whole source conpriso coming up, and you know if those of us who've done those things, like in the old days, we go slide by slide. Wait, there's a word missing. Wait, there's a word missing. No, and you know where I'm going with that. So I want to hear this whole thing through. And then you tell me what you're what you're good with and you're not you're not not good with, and then we can start from there. It's perspective, all, and that's it. Thank you. Going off that, Mike, how do you stay true to yourself during 
the time you're in right now trying to find that next opportunity how does one stay true to themselves with that i think you're on mute i i realized i was on mute <laughs> and i got some help from shannon thank you <laughs> you know honestly I, daniel um when i met with you back in the source of minneapolis and and when i learned that you got this role to which i also went for um i want you to know how proud i was mm -hmm. of you um i am i just think you're such a genuine person and i've learned so much from you in my own content journey so i think to to answer your question how do you stay true to yourself i think it comes down to you really have to believe in in where you're going and what you're going to become um my career has been unique. Um, I went from ADP uh, for nine years, and then I took a risk. I went to my faith-based group, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And I did that for a year and a half. And that was, it gave me international recruiting, which I didn't have under my belt. And I wanted it so bad. But the, And then I learned how to organize processes and take things in. And that was a journey. It was a risk. I could, here's the point. I could still be employed at ADP. If I had, if I wanted to be, I mean, I could, if I had stayed there, I would have probably been promoted by now, but I made a choice when I got a phone call to do something I'd never done before. And I went to an organization that needed my skill set, and, and it, it was unique. It was a risk. And then I, then I went to the source and recruit company, great experience there, but our, our consultancy, you know, revenue dried up. I just talked to Jared Crow over there, who's our director of sales, and just had a good conversation with him. And, and the challenge is real. It's the challenge is real for anyone who wants to be an entrepreneur. Um, taking a risk is one of the biggest things that you can ever do to be true to yourself. Mm. Because in order to gain new skills, I guess my message is don't be afraid to take a risk in this environment. Because you're darned if you don't, and you're darned if you do it's it's the the freedom to make the decision to take a risk that actually makes you stronger and makes you better and now if i hadn't done what i did and hadn't made that choice there's been a couple times i even asked steve i said what would have happened if i just stayed at adp i wouldn't be unemployed right now and then he said don't worry about it it's going to be okay and, and I loved that advice, Steve, that day. And, and you resonated with me on all the calls that I've ever had with you about staying true to myself from the standpoint of knowing my inner compass. What is it that I value? Does the organization that I'm going to work for value what I bring? Um, I think you have to have all that clarity in your mind and not lose sight of that fact because it's just, you know, we've been through the whipsaw. Brian Fink, you and I, remember this conversation that we had a few months ago? I want to come back to you. We had a very deep conversation. Oh, we did. Oh, we went, about, to, we went to a lot of places. Yes, we did, right? And and we talked about where we'd been in this journey of craziness since 2020. Um, when I lost my mom in 2022, I'm going to get vulnerable for a minute. I was stuck. Yeah. I didn't know where I was going to go. I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't, my best friend was gone, but yet I am so grateful for the, the person I've become because being true to yourself is being human. Now, if you're in recruiting and you're in this game, remember the human being that the human beings we work with and the way we help each other. It's really what this is all about in this profession. And it comes back to you tenfold when you're doing everything in your power to help others for no other reason than just to be a good human. No other agenda. Put it to the side. Throw your ego out the window. And when you do that, it you let the world see a bit more beautiful side of you that becomes, you know, we, we I've talked about mental health on this before when i when i came out and i said hey i've struggled with anxiety my whole life generalized anxiety but i'm more powerful because i own my humanity and own 
that which is actually a strength because it allows me to have empathy and that's the shining course and the compass that keeps me going to answer that question i know it was a little long-winded but i hope i answered that well one of the things that this this community idea right shannon what you and steve started here with this and the other things that you are doing at higher EZ, and if we go back to SourceCon, i think we're going to find whether it was dan mike myself the other people who were in minneapolis for SourceCon was a crossroads, a pivot, a team in the road, whatever you want to call it for a lot of us. And I'm willing to bet that when people come back from the upcoming SourceCon or the, your up, their upcoming event, or maybe I can have some impact with Minnesota talent leaders in April and June, that whether it's a virtual or an in-person community, I think we're going to find that has been a major, we know this, but we're experiencing it now that not being around each other for the last four years with some consistency has really, really impacted us, not in a good way. Because now we're hearing the stories of I bumped into so-and-so, I spoke with so-and-so when I was at, and some profound things are happening because of these things that are going on. Um, that whole communal part of the community word, right? Like. I think a lot of us shut off. I think a lot of us stop talking to each other, not with intent, right? We're trying to, we're trying to manage ourselves and our families and our businesses and our careers and the world's weird and politics this and COVID that, and we're all just freaking tired. Um, but I think that now that we're all, it seems like more people are coming back to this togetherness part and to keep reminding people that we need to do this going forward. Well said. There is a question in the chat. Uh, Mate Rodriguez states that uh, she's looking for a new role and transfer her skills, but similar to recruiting. When they read the job description, she doesn't have X experience that they're looking for. How does she overcome that or any recommendations how to pivot to maybe a people ops or a employer branding or something similar within recruiting, but not recruiting itself? If I could add a little background to that one, Maite is uh, she's in she's in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Uh, she's an absolute sweetheart. I, I helped her with her resume. I've helped her with her LinkedIn banner. Um, there are, uh, you know, I've connected her, you know, and and I think that's generally speaking, um, a group like this is uh, Mike, the, you, you, the group that you're doing. It's uh, you, we're, we're we're all about connecting people to whom we to, to we know to whom we know. You know, it doesn't guarantee a, an interview. It doesn't guarantee anything. But, you know, we certainly need to make connections to people. And so that, you know, keep that as an, as, as a, as a, as a, you know, foundational deliverable of, 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 of everyone here. Um, it, 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 it's, it, it may, if she, if we brought her on, on, up on the screen, we could, you know, she could tell her story, but it's, it may be easier that way. Than just giving you know blanket recommendations uh, or suggestions to things, but uh, you know take a look at her profile. I'm going to drop it. I'm going to drop it in the um, in the chat here, and uh, unless she's done it already, no, she hasn't done it already. Um, but you know connect with her if you don't know her. You know connect with her. Same thing. Ryan Carey had put a note up that he's reaching towards his wit's end. He's got about another month that he says uh, where, in which he says he may be homeless. If you aren't connected to everybody in the chat in here, you know, please connect with them and just ask how you can help, you know, do what I do, you know, you know, that, that instant meeting thing on the blue devil, maybe one of the really good, th I know, Hey, it may be one of the really, one of the few really great things about the platform. Talk to people, just ask them, tell me who you are. How can I help you? Because any, everybody here, everybody in the chat, can 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 branch into any area of ta whether i whether whether you're an, as an ic or a leader it's just a question of uh you know n knowing your strength knowing your limitations at the moment and you know working to bolster the things that aren't as strong as that is as, as as they need to be and you know just ask ask for assistance ask for help mike does it all the time not a bad thing, Mike, by the way. You know that. One of the few times Mike is speechless because he's because uh, he's muted. I was just going to say, I uh, 
you know what, I, I have to say that every single one of these amazing people on this call have been great to work with. Nicole, I don't know you as well. I know, I was, I'm going to message but, you because I am unemployed. But we, too. Should definitely, we should definitely chat. Um, yeah, we should. But you know what, I think that's the key, guys. It's, it's just remember that most recruiters will always help our own, right? We, we know that. We, we get this part. And you know what's powerful about that, too? is as soon as you connect and you get off the phone with that support, uh, supportive call, I go away empowered. I feel so much better about the job search. It's like, okay, I'm not alone. This is, this is like Steve has been telling me this every time I call him, Mike, you're not alone in this. All of us are going through this. And, and so it's, it's a great thing to know that we have the support that we do. I, I love this community. I love the sourcing and recruiting community. I just do. I mean, it's one of the most supportive communities I know. And Shannon, going back to the days in SourceCon when I first met you, there, there's always been something special about you as a human being. Um, the other day, um, it came up on my feed and I, I tagged you in it. And there was that speech you gave after my first no. SourceCon presentation in 2018 when we were in Vegas. That was a life-changing moment. It was a defining moment in my career. But I remember you standing up and talking about um, what had happened and how proud you were of everybody. And it resonated with me because there's always there's this genuine concern you have for people, Shannon, that makes you just an amazing human being to do to do all this. And I'm glad you're doing what you're doing. It, you. It's needed, you know, and then. Oh, I had a I had a memory too, pop up. I had like, a memory pop up too. of Derek Zeller. Oh. Okay, folks, if you don't know who Derek Zeller was, a few years ago, our good friend passed away. And wow. He was such an a an iconic figure in our community and just a powerful human being that genuinely cared. It's like a big teddy bear. Like every time I saw him I'd give him a big hug. And and that that resonates with me today. I think of of the recruiters struggling. I think of the folks who are out there in our community that are, remember this guys, remember this big thing. You can't see what's underneath the surface of the struggle, the human struggle of what your candidates and fellow recruiters are facing. And there's strength there, but sometimes it's gonna feel disconnected in a time like this where many their egos have been bruised their mm. hearts have been bruised so be gentle with each other please yeah. very important right now yeah i think that's what has me so sad which is why i was so motivated to write the today's episode of for recruiters by recruiters newsletter um <clears throat> was just like you know knowing that knowing what good community looks like and having that feeling of what good community looks like. And we as people haven't changed, you know what I mean? Like we're still the same good people we always were, but then we're in this like survival mode right now mm -hmm. where, you know, we, we kind of lost what was important to us. And to me, it's like, if we can come together, if we, we had come together before, um, why can't we still do it again today? Um, and so it's like, it's, it's, I don't know. I feel like there is enough for everyone. And um, Mike, I've always appreciated um, your outlook um, and your perspective on everything. It's always been super positive. And I know that's difficult, um, but that's what I just, you know, I've said this before, I just want us to get back into that place where we are literally supporting each other and we're learning from each other and we're leveling up because I look back at the last two years and I feel like none of, we haven't really grown much as an industry. I think that's because how do you grow when, you know, you're in a different mindset, right? And and that's what makes me, you know, nostalgic about what we had hmm. before. There was a, I, I, I saw, I don't, it was, I'm going to go with a news organization talked about a survey or study that mentioned that, um, IQ scores go down 15 points when people are having economic financial issues at home. Mm -hmm. And so when you talk about we, a many, an industry that has been trying to survive now four years, 
right? We try to survive 2020 during a shutdown. We try to survive 2021 during a, uh, an epic resignation period. We try to survive 22, not knowing what was going into 23 and now we're into 24. And so, yes, there is this, how does an industry evolve when it's trying to survive? Um, you know, is is something we're saying. A, a quick note, if I may, sometimes I see it in the chat where someone says I'm looking for a new role. It would really help. I appreciate that when, when things start getting difficult, you're looking for any role in this space, yeah. but it does help when you say I'm looking for, you know, a senior technology recruiter role or one of three titles in a location, whether it's remote, hybrid, or or in person. Yeah. Um, because, and again, I'm speaking this from my experience here in Minneapolis that um, I was back in the city la two weeks ago, or when we were all together last. Mm. Um, and I got together with um, a VP of mark uh, a marketing friend of mine um, who she's looking for a new role. And she says, you know, I'm like, but like, what kind of a marketing role are you looking for? Because it ends up being she works at a, and this is the second time it's happened to me in the last couple of years, she works at a very large med device company as a director. But then she told me what her budget was, how many her team was, and she's got two admins. I'm like, oh, so you're anybody else's VP. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, so you are a CMO somewhere else. And so what happens sometimes is that people will say to me, I'm looking for a new recruiting role. And I, and and I kind of wait for three more sentences. So when you are having a conversation with folks, if you can be just a titch more specific, um, because I don't know if you're looking for a coordinator role or recruiter role, are you looking for a management or director role? Um, and do don't be afraid to pivot. Look at Dan. <laughs> yeah. He's doing marketing. He's killing it. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's be oh, open. Cool. Like, like we shouldn't, um, like, like Mike, what did he post on LinkedIn, you know, the other day, like, you know, sourcing is not junior to recruiting, you know, I, I feel like if you're a recruiter struggling for work, you know, then source, man, you know, be open to that, uh, be open to operations, be open to recruitment marketing, be open to employer branding. Be open to sales development. We, we, we do, we, mm -hmm. what, what do you think sourcing yeah. is? Dude, as, if you guys want to do sales development for HR tech companies, that's they will hire you. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's a whole yeah. ecosystem. I, I talked. Okay, yeah. I spoke to an old mentor of mine. His name was Nathan North, and um, he's working at a payroll company. And he was working. And many, many years ago, we worked together in Los Gatos at HR Solutions Partners. Right before I got, you know, went on the journey of Net Polarity, where I met Mark Tortorici. And then everything kind of unfolded from there into my journey from where I am now. But he said something the other day. He says, there's a whole ecosystem that you can pivot to. Um, and recruiting is very cyclical. So always remember, um, I think Joel Lagley <laughs> put it out there at the very bottom of, of all the things that recruiters do. He said, and sometimes we get laid off. <laughs> so, but the whole ecosystem that supports uh, recruiting is a great career path. If you're interested in moving into the tech, say you're a tech recruiter and you need to move into a supporting infrastructure uh, type of point of view, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. You can always come back to recruiting. Mm -hmm. um, if I, I can oh, oh, first, Steve. No, you first. No, it just, it's, it, you know, because uh, uh, was it uh, uh, in, uh, Anita Lawhoff uh, said, you know, these ideas are excellent, more coming. Here's an idea that some of you have heard from me. It's uh, and it goes towards the targeting you had mentioned, Paul. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, obviously the 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 what we believe that red dot is and the bull dot bullseye is exactly what we've been doing most recently. But what I like to suggest people and and this is anybody who's in a job search is go around your apartment, go around your place, go around your house with a pad and something to write with. Go into every room, open up every drawer look under every bed and make a list of all the things that you like to spend your money on, things that you enjoy using, products or services. And then find out who makes them. Hmm. Because then you can say, you know what? Looking for something here on the desk. That's even, that's even remotely uh, good. I can't. Oh, yeah. Here's a good one. Um, let's say we say, look, man, I just love swimming shit. Okay. 
let me go see let me go look you know but i don't do that stuff i swim you know i i i i, I am chlorinated all my tattoos are of the water you know it's like maybe i should just bite the bullet and Dan, screenshot look at that industry ha ha you missed it <laughs> But that's it, you know, you know, and then it's not a question you don't change. That's not a passion. It's not a, that's horseshit. Follow your passion. Uh, she's at work right now. I don't, I can only do it at so many hours of the day. <laughs> but if it's things that I know that, you know, I, I, I appreciate this product or service so much that I will buy it whether I have to or not. I just, I just like it so much. When you interview with those people, you're already a customer. Yeah. You can't fake that. I would also say if you're going to interview for a different role that you're not normally doing, for example, if you're moving recruiting into sourcing and you're interviewing for a sourcing role, make sure you are making the employer know that you are willing to pivot and why you can pivot. Mm -hmm. Don't have examples specifically on recruiting if you're interviewing for a sourcing role or vice versa. There's actually a course now up on Recruiting Academy that's going to be released on Tuesday. And it all it's all about how switching from an agency recruiting role to an in-house role. Mm. So there's a lot of cool tips on that because interviewing, a lot of agency recruiters go into, into an in-house interview and talk about um, profit and spread and how many contractors. And it's all oh. about that transaction. But in an in-house environment, they could care less about that. They want more of a transformational mind and how you're going to make that long-term impact for the actual company versus the transaction piece of agency. So take a look on that Tuesday, but it's some good tips on how to pivot. And also go look at the, some, there, there have been a, a few higher easy um, uh, webinars on recruiting metrics. And you'll see how those those tend to tie to tie together as well. I want to I want to come back to the comment that Ryan made about how he's looking in all these different areas. Ryan, I don't know you. We haven't met. I am going to throw something out there. I noticed that you've got experience working with SkillBridge individuals, right? And SkillBridge individuals is a broader term for those individuals that are coming out of the military, as I understand it. So my so my question is. Have we pursued talking to a company about engaging in their military ERG or BRG and creating that environment there? Because I'm, I know that DEI is getting uh, a whipping right now in, in the press and in the media and defunded. But one of the areas that's not getting defunded are BRGs and ERGs for our military spouses and former military uh, former mm. military leaders, right? So when we look at that, have we have we explored that as an option about being the liaison to help organizations create that center of excellence around welcoming our military veterans into their into their house into their uh, community? It's just power. an idea, you know. And on on, on that, I on that, love that. Brian, I just popped in the. Um, Really, the association of ERGs and councils into the chat, and and this is the this is where every ERG and association is uh, is, is listed, um, and the other part is uh, is is literally you can start go to go to the bases, you know, go to the uh, you know the you know find the trend you know the the the, the addy of the uh, the transition offices, and and uh, you know things like that it's it's con deal well and, and, point. and this is the part where we might need to source our next role right yeah um, one of the things i was going to say a moment ago so it'll fit into this is that you every two weeks I think every two weeks i think about this right two weeks ago and two weeks before that i always talk about here's what i think i'm seeing in minneapolis with recruiting sourcing roles and what the economy seems to be like and i think a month ago i said that we've it felt like we'd come off the bottom that it seems sustainable that we weren't yet seeing contract recruiter roles yet which would be the next sort of like positive thing mm -hmm. and there have been five to seven new ones that opened up in the last two weeks now i appreciate that five and seven is not 50 than 70 that we need okay but it is this um there's starting to be just enough now where it feels like a trend 
I appreciate. So I, if, if I'm thinking about this, Brian, that was awesome. I'm going to start pitching myself to companies and say, look, is this something you want to get into, need to get into, thought about getting into? Why don't you and I start working 20 to 30 hours a week for the next six months and I can help build a program for you? Like, go, I mean, I always hate giving this advice, right? Because I'm, in some ways, I'm asking you to go get some more failure, right? Start sending messages, but you need to be a salesperson for yourself during this time and go source your next role and go pitch to companies. Whether they have a role or not, whether they have this yet or not, because they should. And I've got a whole rant that I'll say because it starts the F-bombs. We haven't had one yet. Companies okay, should so, have so this place. No F-bombs. No F-bombs today. My daughter is listening. I'm kidding. Um, Paul, you, you bring... Steve, she's not listening. Um, you bring up a good point is that we're recruiters and we actively solve problems. Yeah. Why aren't you pitching an organization or could you pitch an organization and say... Are military veterans important to your overall sales strategy? I love that question. Mm. Mm. I, can I, can I share a thought um, as I'm on the job hunt right now and I've got some ideas on this? So one thing I want to share that I think is, okay, two things. Paul, you said something to me early on in my search, which I've been trying. I've been reaching out to some of the, um, the uh, local chamber of commerces and getting a hold of the president of that organization saying, hey, you know, what is going on in your world? You know, do you know folks that are hiring right now? You know who's going to rant? Uh, set up Google alerts for yourself for hiring. Um, now, Jim Shroud, if you go to the, the SourceCon webinar, uh, he had a great, if you keep, on, keep an eye on his feed. He's given all sorts of great tips about how to source your own next opportunity, right? But here's a big one. Look at the companies that you worked for in the past. <laughs> And there, there may be a theme to the industries that you've been hired in, okay? So for me, it's HCM. I've been in the HCM world, okay? So I know a lot of the players. I know Paycor. I know, you know, Rippling. I know um, Trinet, you know, all these different companies. So I'm reaching out to the CEOs of those companies and saying, hey, I have nine years in recruiting. Now, I haven't gotten anywhere with that yet. I've gotten a couple great calls. Um, they just weren't hiring yet, but they're keeping me on their radar. So I've been reaching out to the CEO and the chief talent acquisition officer what are the problems that they're facing what are the issues that they're facing you can create a role for yourself um, if you pitch the right company a magical thing might happen there they may not have advertised that role yet but if you go to the ones in your industry get the target lists of the ones that you really want to work for for me it's ukg oh my gosh i would love to work there so it's here's the thing you got to keep your eye on the ball for the big company that you want to work for and pitch, pitch your, what you have to offer, whether that's the veteran thing we're talking about. And I saw a great uh, question from Jen in here, and she's asking, what do you do? Any recommendations for how to help you stand out if you want to continue to learn and are open to learning new or necessary skills, but they could just hire someone with those skills? Um, basically saying that she was in the final round where they, that other person had the, the skill set. Okay, here's what you do. You go look at the companies that have a need for your skill set, and it start with your, the industry that you were in previously. Look at the competitors. Go to Owler, do go to Dun and Bradstreet, do some research at your local library. Reference librarians are your friends, you guys. You'd be amazed at what information I've gone to my reference library and I said, "Hey, I need a, a competitor list. I, I've done all this, but maybe I'm not thinking of some other ones." And she's like, "Ooh." Here's some other information for you. And she took me to a database. And I, I, I didn't even realize that my, my library card had access to free databases with business listings. And it has startups and all sorts of stuff. And I can drill down. And I started to play with it. And I was like, ooh, I'm finding contact information of people in the library database. That's why librarians make great sources, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so th there's all sorts of fun things you can try. Just Think out of the box. That's what you got to do right now. Any last minute comments before we wrap up? I just want to remind everyone that um, if you are looking for a job or know someone who's looking for a job, on April 2nd, we'll be hosting a conference. Uh, rapid fire format, so 15 minute sessions. 
if you want to see the, the format before you volunteer yourselves, um, actually on Monday, March 18th, a week from this Monday, we will be doing um, our first ever rapid fire session uh, at Hire Easy. And Dan can share information uh, in the chat about that. But on April 2nd is the one that I really want to promote. And the only speakers for this conference will be job seekers. So if you want that extra exposure, if you want to get in front of, uh, you know, a different audience than you have before, um, you know, we're going to do our best to get all the recruiting leaders, um, you know, to attend. Um, but if you have something that you're really passionate about that, you you know, probably don't get to talk about during an interview, if you really want to showcase something, again, that you, that means a lot to you, whether it's diversity hiring, military hiring, sourcing, email marketing, whatever you'd like, send me an email, Shannon Pritchett at HireEasy.com, and we'd be happy to have you as a speaker. So that'll be April 2nd, and I hope we can do more of these. So again, we're just trying to do our part to get you more exposure. And the part of that that's really interesting is if if you've never spoken before, yeah, this mm -hmm. is your first time, and 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 those of us who've spoken before know what that first time is like. Oh yeah. So we're all here to help you with your ideas, with your slides. And Steve has to say that he's serious. He will help you. Yeah, the so, more exposure for yourself, the better. This this community with Hire Easy has truly helped me find a lot of connections. Still looking for a job, but it's been honestly like life changing. So I would, if you have time and can spare fifteen minutes and do a topic that you're interested in, I really recommend doing it. Nicole, is it in your nature to go do a video like you did the other day? No, it was like cringeworthy. I was like dying. Annie was like, you're fine. You're fine. It was good. It was great. And your daughter was going, oh, mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? I loved it. It was really, it was fun. But that's like the stuff that I've gotten to do, right? Being unemployed and meeting all of you and just being involved in the higher easy community. I've done so many things that have taken me out of my comfort zone and taken me out of my Google bubble. We can just say that. So again, highly recommend doing stuff that's out of your comfort zone during this time. Because when are you going to be able to do it again, right? You might, if you I'm get right a job. I'm right there with you, Nicole. So right? True. You might not have the time so to true. do it, so do it now. You don't know who you're going to meet. Like last time when we had this therapy session, I met Jason and I met him last week one on one, and it was a, it was the one of the like the worst days that I've had in a long time. And he was like what I needed that day. So you just never know who you're going to meet through this community. And we're all lifelines. If you're having a tough day, yeah, reach out. Just, just reach out. Mm -hmm. You know, some of us, you know, don't be afraid of this phone. Like I tell my daughter, you know, you can you you can give your thumbs right. a rest <laughs> and actually put this up to your head like this. Don't do this. If you if you do this to me, I'm on the phone with you in public. Oh no 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 no. I'm Maddie right. wanted to talk to you yesterday. She knew I was talking to you. It's like she was well, like, "You're on the phone with Uncle Steve," and I'm like, "No, I can't do the thing." Well, that's different. That's different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, as we wrap up, I want to encourage the audience to do a couple things. This community does not grow and we can't help each other until you get involved and then have the buddy system to get other people involved. So what I would encourage you to do is download the PDF that I put in the chat then sign up for the events that are upcoming, sign up to speak sign up for the community page, educate yourself in the academy, and really have conversations that go beyond a handshake. And the only way we do this is we bring other people along with you to get involved. So that's what I want to encourage you. Um, and if you guys need anything, like we said, feel free to reach out personally, and we want to help you out as, on this journey. Shannon, when you and Steve did this that first time, who was it? Was the two of you and who? This, or career therapy? September and October, what was it, back in October, November? I think it was just Steve and I. Do you realize what has happened since then? Well, the, the gang's gotten bigger. Yeah. <laughs> I'm running out of Peanuts characters. I, <laughs> I do have a few, I do have a room for a few more. I know it, I, I, I've got the brain, the, the gerbils are running on the wheels in the brain, okay? Yeah. Uh-oh. But also, one. don't just, don't just <laughs> sign up. New friends. Bring, 
bring at least two friends with you. Bring yeah. two people from your company. You know, we're not just teaching. We're not just talking about things that are for people who are looking. These are are, are things about your about self, about honesty, about courage that are going to help you while you are working. So this is not just for folks who are looking. It's for people who are working and want to get better. Mm -hmm. speaking of speaking of getting better i want to put something on dan's plate dan mm -hmm. i know that we've got the second of, of april coming up steve already said that he would give time to help people build their decks if there are people who need help building their decks oh 100 percent. bubba's here you know I'm, I'm willing to i'm willing to pitch in bubba. uh just bubba it's, it's don't, on the, um, don't don't let making don't make the fear of building a deck be why you don't do this for the love of everything. Yeah, let us help no. out. Oh yeah, we, we we got we got we have some ideas. Some of them are immoral, but we have some ideas. <laughs> Brian, thank you for saying that. You all do not let you not want to do a presentation. I make crappy slide decks <laughs> when they're mine. I help others because I can. But don't don't let it get in the way of you doing this. Yeah, right? we're we're gonna do awesome things together. We're going to do awesome things together. And if anybody wants to have uh, pictures of blue devils, I have plenty of them. <laughs> oh, especially when it goes down. <laughs> what does that say? What does that say, Brian? That was Bubba. hilarious yesterday. Bubba. 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 Awesome. Well, yeah. thanks again, everyone. Have a fantastic rest of your Thursday and a better rest of the weekend coming up. Bye, team. This is great. Well, Good to talk to you. Bye. Bye.